fat people though, it's huge. Yeah, the extent that you have to consider. Yeah. Man, but speaking of fat Mouthpiece is easy. Where did we go from there though? We, we started out with some we're, sort of a brain damage thing. We, 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 we were talking about Al Madrigal, and then we got on dude sucking dude's dicks. Right. And then we got on the head trauma. But I felt like we had an important thing to say about head trauma. Like, what did we start off with? Um, it was just that it's kind of bad to, <laughs> you know? I feel oh, right. being tired. Yeah. yeah. If you, if, I mean, I guarantee you that has something to do with why your uh, testosterone is low. Also, you know, another thing that has to do with uh, how many, like, healthy fats, how much uh, healthy fat is in your diet, because mm -hmm. fats and e even cholesterol are literally the precursors for hormones. It's like how your body, like, one of the things that people find when they go on a heavy fat-based diet, like a ketogenic diet, is um, their hormones jump up. It's because your body, that's how your body makes hormones. Your body uses fats and cholesterol actually to make hormones. Now when you say healthy fats, like avocado, avocado coconut oil. Avocado is interesting because it's a combination of uh, saturated fat and unsaturated fat. And most people assume that saturated fat is bad, bad for you, but it's not. A lot of that came out of the sugar industry that your fucking dad was probably part of. <laughs> the, right. the sugar industry paid off. And this was from the New York Times, a bunch of like really reputable newspapers reported on this really recently. The sugar industry paid off scientists to lie about the effects of saturated fats to cover up the effects of sugar. It's really sad because so many people to this day run around worrying about saturated fat and not worrying about sugar because they're worried about saturated fat in their diet and that's what made people switch over to shit like margarine, which is terrible for you. They didn't even recommend margarine anymore. That's how trans fats got introduced into people's Trans fats are terrible. Dude, they're trying to make them illegal and they've made them illegal in America, but they still have like another year or so where you're allowed to sell it, which is hilarious. They give these companies an extra year or two to get rid of all the bullshit that they, that they made so that they can still fuck people over for 12 months and make money. They knew that that stuff was bad for you decades ago. And they yeah. just, they've been like, la, 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 not listening. Dude, I'm dying to tell you this story about, uh, about my dad. Okay, so when I was 12, I moved to Toronto. Right? I lived in Canada. My dad was the president of Nabisco Canada. And I was sweeping a headbang. I was a fucking rabid Motley Crue fan. Right? I fucking right. love Motley Crue. This, this was 1987. Shout out to the dog. Right. Now, this is, this is their food. They're girls, girls, girls to it, right? I mean, I got fucking Motley Crue all over my bedroom walls. I'm fucking crazy about these fucking guys. Now, they, they come to uh, to Toronto for their girls, girls, girls to it. They make all these gardens. And uh, the day before the concert, well, I should say my dad knew that what a big fan I was. The Visco Canada had uh, a skybox in the arena. But my dad also knew that that nobody from the Bisco gave a fuck about the Motley Crue concerts. The skybox was going to be empty. So my dad, my dad said to me, he said, hey, I know how much you love Motley Crue. Tell him I'm going to bring you to the concert. We can sit in the Bisco skybox. And I tell my dad, Dad, watching Motley Crue through a plate glass window sucks. Right? And he says, and he says, all right, well, you know, basically, fuck you. you know? He said, if you can do better, then it will be better. You know, and we'll, then we'll use your ticket to do it, you know? I'm fucking when I was 13. Right. So, the day before the concert, I see on the news, they're, they're like complaining. They're like, these fucking asshole rock stars come to our city and put the fuck around like one way or another. And I'm like, dude, they're here. The fucking Molly. What, what, what are you saying? I'm confused. I, when, the asshole they, rock stars? Yeah, what? yeah, they, were, they made the news for some like, well, I forget what it was. I think they started some kind of fire or some, something big, but they were on the news. You know, and the, like, uh, they, they were complaining, these fucking guys come here. Okay. And so I'm like, they're in Toronto, they're in the city now, and they're about the concerts tomorrow. So I deduce that they're in a hotel. I'm gonna fucking find them. I'm gonna fucking find You're 13? I was 13. And so I go fucking running to my room, right? It's like, right away, I'm thinking, I know all the guys, and I know their real names, like Vince Neal is Vincent Wharton, right? <laughs> like, I know all their names, and I'm like, I can fucking check into the, the hotel as like Frank Carlton Ferrano. <laughs> right. That's Nicky Zick. They're not going to use their real names, and I was like, they're going to check into the hotel and they're going to their manager, right? And I just guess you just knew it. But right into my room, and I fucking check on my little cassette fucking album sleeves, and I check everyone that says Doc McGee, which is their manager, and Doc McGee or something like that's the fucking one. I go run into uh, the, the phone book, and like, you know, I fucking open it up the hotel, and the yellow paper. I just straight start calling every fucking hotel in the yellow pages. And when the hotel answered, they're like, what do you mean, I'm gonna do to Mr. Doc 